Hello and welcome everyone. I am Tremaine Wright, the chair of the Cannabis Control Board. Recognizing that we have all board members present or participating remotely, I'm pleased to call the order the eighth meeting of the Cannabis Control Board and to welcome all of you who are participating via real-time live stream. This meeting will be recorded and the recording and transcript will be available to the public on the Office of Cannabis Management's website, cannabis.ny.gov. Information on Cannabis Control Board meetings is available on it via a designated section of the OCM website. Today's agenda includes several substantive items that we're excited to tackle. These include welcome and brief remarks from myself, review and approval of the meeting minutes from the Cannabis Control Board meeting held on March 10th, consideration of recommended conditional cultivation, cultivator applications for licensure, consideration of medical cannabis home cultivation revised regulations, an update on the social equity fund, a report from the Office of Cannabis Management's Executive Director, Chris Alexander, and then we will adjourn. All right, so let's get started. We have been very busy here since our start in October. In these past, in the first six months, we've expanded the medical cannabis program. It is now much easier to access the medical program because we have expanded the types of providers who can certify patients, and we've authorized the sale of whole flour, which should now provide a more cost-friendly option. We also formally established the cannabinoid hemp program, providing clear regulations to our CBD businesses that help keep New Yorkers safe and guide our businesses as they compete in this fast growing market. And as we advanced these two key pillars of our market, we have also moved quickly to get the adult use market off the ground. Thanks to the support of Governor Hochul, we've announced the Seeding Opportunity Initiative. This initiative positions individuals or family members of individuals with prior cannabis related offenses who also have business experience to be the first licensees for adult use sales in New York State. This initiative also includes the adult use cannabis conditional cultivar license, which Governor Hochul signed into law in February and allows our existing hemp farmers to be the first adult use cannabis licensees to grow cannabis in New York State. Today, we're going to take the next step and consider awarding the first seeding opportunity initiative cultivator licenses. So it has been a very busy six months and we're proud of our progress thus far. So without further ado, let's dive into the first order of business. The first order of business is the review and approval of the meeting minutes from the March 10th Cannabis Control Board meeting. However, before we move further into today's proceedings, I need to make some brief remarks about the open meetings law. As stated at every board meeting, the Cannabis Control Board is subject to the open meetings law to ensure the greatest level of transparency and public participation in the affairs of government. Due to the ongoing pandemic, we have requested that the members of the public join us via video conference, which we will continue to offer to keep the public and members of this body safe. Now I'll read a brief statement on open meetings law into the record. Pursuant to Chapter 1 of the Laws of 2022, enacted on January 14th, 2022, board members may continue to fully participate in meetings via video conference from locations that are not open to the public, provided that the public has the ability to view or listen to such proceedings and the meetings are recorder, recorded and later transcribed. The public was provided with information on how to access this meeting within the public meeting notice distributed to members of the press and posted on the OCM website. A recording of this meeting together with the transcript will also be available on the OCM website as well as previous recordings, meeting minutes and transcripts are archived on the OCM website as well. Please note, there is a designated tab on the website entitled board meetings which provides access to this information. 
May I please have a motion to approve the March 10th, 2022 board meeting minutes? Thank you, Ms. McDaniel. May I have a second on the motion? Second. Thank you, Ms. Metzger. Um, is there any discussion by any board member? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Be able to get an audio on those who are live. Aye. Aye. Thanks. Um, all opposed, abstentions. The motion is approved in the March 10th, 2022 board meeting minutes carries. Concerning the next order of business, may I please have a motion to consider and approve resolution number 2022 05 resolution approving conditional. Cultivator applications for licensure. Make that motion. Thank you, Ms. Metzger. May I have a second on the motion? Second. Thank you, Mr. McDaniel. And Mr. Alexander, could you please provide an overview of the applications? Absolutely. And thank you, Madam Chair and board members. This is an exciting moment. Uh, the board, if it approves this resolution, I will be awarding the first adult use cannabis licenses in the state of New York to small farmers. This action will put the seeding opportunity initiative in motion by allowing these farmers to cultivate the first products that will be sold in dispensaries owned by justice involved New Yorkers by the end of this year. The process for these applications started at our last board meeting on March 10th, when the board approved the application for the adult use conditional cultivator license. Five days later, on March 15th, we opened the portal to begin accepting these applications. The response from farmers has been robust. To date, we've received more than 150 applications and, are, and all are in some stage of review. We were able to fully process and recommend 52 applications by March 31st in time to get them to the board for review. These applications represent the first batch and we're gonna to continue to process applications on a rolling basis and working to get them to the board for approval as quickly as possible. We understand that the growing season waits for no one and we have to move quickly to help our farmers take full advantage of it. I would just like to add that I'm so proud of the team here at OCM uh, and the work that they've done in this first application review period and, and really um, setting up New York's market for success with these farmers who will lead the way. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Thank you to the whole team and to Chris. Thank you for leading us this far, um, this far. And at this time, I would like to make a motion to amend the pending motion by amending the proposed resolution to incorporate attachment A. Attachment A is a list of the 50 applicants for which I have, as of this morning, made a preliminary determination to grant conditional adult use cultivator licenses with the exception of two applicants, which also I shall discuss um, further momentarily. Attachment A can be seen on the screen in the PowerPoint that's currently on display. May I have a second on my motion? I second that. Thank you. Is there any discussion or comment by any board member? Hearing none, are there any objections to the application to the applicants or request that these applicants be brought before the board for consideration? I have no objection to the applicants listed on attachment A, and I have no request that any of these applicants be brought before the board for consideration. Yeah. Uh, Madam Chair, I also have no objection to the applicants listed on attachment A and uh, no, no request uh, that any of these applicants be brought before the board for consideration. Madam Chair, I have no objection to the applicants listening on attachment A and have no request for the applicants to be brought before the board for consideration. But before we move on, I just want to say there are probably two unsung heroes here. ITS, our technology systems for the state of New York, did a great job in getting the system up running to get these applications in the first place. And there are a bunch of people at uh, OCM that ground this out to really be able to review the application. So as a board member, I just want to uh, express my appreciation to Chris, uh, Axel, and your staff. Thank you. And Mr. Perry? No objections, no requests. Thank you. Therefore, I will call for a vote on the motion. Um, Ms. Metzger? 
I vote aye. Ms. Garcia. Sorry, I vote aye. Mr. McDaniel. Aye. Mr. Perry. Aye. And I vote in favor of the motion as well. The motion to approve resolution number 2022-06, resolution approving conditional cultivator applications for licensure listed on attachment A carries. And at this time, I would like to make a motion to consider and approve an amendment to the previous resolution as carried by amending the resolution to incorporate attachment B. Attachment B is a list of two applicants for which I have, as of this morning, made a preliminary determination to grant conditional adult use cultivator licenses to certain individuals and entities that have applied for conditional adult use cultivator licenses. Attachment B can be seen on the PowerPoint slide currently on display. Any before we be uh, any discussion now or before we begin any dis, uh, discussion, any recusals? I'm recusing myself on these two items. I express no opinion. Thank you. Um, may I have, if, is there any discussion? Sorry. Hearing none, may I please have a second on the motion? Second. Thank you, Mr. McDaniel. Um, any question and comment by uh, your grace <laughs> by <laughs> control board members? Um, hearing none, are there any objections or requests that the applicants be brought before the board? Madam Chair, I have no objection to the applicants listed on attachment B, and I have no request that any of these applicants be brought before the board for consideration. And if I could also just add how thrilled I am that we are starting out of the gate with sun-grown cannabis on New York farms. And I also want to express my appreciation to staff for all your work in getting this done. Thank you. Um, I echo those sentiments. Um, and uh, I too have no objections to the applicants on attachment B and have no request for any additional applicants um, be brought forth um, to the board for consideration. And I have no objections to the applicants on uh, attachment B and have uh, no request for it to be brought to the board. Therefore, I will call for a vote on the motion. Ms. Metzger? Aye. Ms. Garcia? Aye. Ms. McDaniel? Aye. And I vote in favor as well. So the motion to approve resolution number 2022-06, resolution approving conditional cultivator applications for licensure listed on attachment A and attachment B carries. <laughs> and I just want to make sure to be uh, call Mr. Perry and make sure to be invite him back into meeting. Um, Mr. Perry, are you back? Yes, I'm here. that which i guess everyone's feeling I'm extremely sure good about I, I, I know it's big greens everybody can go ahead and smile this size of relief and there's joy so i just uh want to give everybody a moment for that but we do we're going to continue we have one more thing. we have a few more things we'll now hear from the office regarding the consideration of the medical cannabis home cultivation regulations so thank you thank, you thank you thank <laughs> you Again, it's just such a momentous day. I'd like to invite actually our Director of Health and Safety, Nicole Quackenbush, uh, to provide this update. Nicole, are you with us? I'm here. Thank you, Chris, Madam Chair, and members of the board, and good afternoon. The public comment period for the medical cannabis home cultivation regulations closed on January 18th. As we pre previously shared, we received over 160 comments from a variety of stakeholders, including drug prevention and awareness, coalitions, small farmers, industry associations, clinical associations, and more. So we heard a great deal from the public, which is the goal of this exercise, and we listened closely to the feedback. As a result, we have revised the regulations to include some of the feedback we've received. To summarize, 
These changes include updating our definitions to provide clarity for terms like on the grounds of and private residence, to streamline one of the sections to clarify that the regulations pertain to certified patients and designated caregivers 21 years of age or older, amending the storage and security requirements to maintain protections while also reducing costs. Clarifying the plant limit for designated caregivers who are growing for multiple patients. And providing a framework for the sale of medical cannabis seeds or immature plants for home cultivation by entities licensed or registered with the office. These regulations include provisions for packaging, labeling, transport, storage, and selling of seeds and immature plants for the purposes of home cultivation of medical cannabis. If the Cannabis Control Board votes to file the revised regulations today, this will trigger a new 45-day public comment period. The 45-day public comment period would begin on May 4th, which is the earliest opportunity for the regulations to appear in the state register. At this time, however, and to be clear, home cultivation of medical cannabis is not yet permitted and will not be permitted until the comments from the next round of public comment period are assessed and the board can adopt the revisions and then have them published in the state register. We recognize that patients are looking for this new option to access their medication at a low cost and we will do everything we can to speed the process along while working within the rules of the state regulatory system. Thank you, Chris. I'll turn that back over to you. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, Madam Chair, the office proposes that you approve to file these regulations and send them out for an additional additional public comment period of 45 days. Thank you. Uh, may I please have a motion to consider and approve resolution number 2022-07, resolution directing the Office of Cannabis Management to file for public comment medical home cultivation revised regulations. Right so moved. We have Mr. Perry. Thank you. And a second. Metzger, thank you. Is there any discussion, question, or comment by any board member? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Ms. Metzger? Aye. Ms. Garcia? Aye. Ms. McDaniel? Aye. Mr. Perry? Aye. And I vote in favor as well. The motion to approve resolution number 2022-07, resolution directing the Office of Cannabis Management to file for public comment Medical Home Cultivation Revised Regulations carries. Our next order of business is that uh, we're going to address the, uh, I'm sorry, what am I looking at? Sorry. During our last Cannabis Control Board meeting on March 10th, board member Mr. McDaniel presented an overview of the $200 million public-private fund that will provide funding to certain eligible applicants from communities impacted by disproportionate policing during the decades long cannabis prohibition. I'd now like to ask and invite board member Ruben McDaniel to provide an update on the fund. Thank you, Madam Chair. It is uh, with much excitement as well today that we announced that in the budget that was approved by the legislature and signed by the governor, uh, we now have the funding to seed the social equity fund. And when you think about the seeding opportunities, we're putting you know, seeds in the ground soon. Uh, we need somewhere to, to sell those seeds from. And so this is one component of that solution. The social equity fund will be a $200 million combination of public and private partnership where we, DASNY, and the OCM work together to identify locations, help build out facilities, and get people up and running to be able to distribute cannabis late 22, early 23. So we're very, very excited about this fund. It is a significant step that the state of New York has taken that other states have really had trouble with getting our social equity program fund underway because access to capital is a big, big obstacle for many to, to put in front of. Some of the work we've done to date, we have begun mock-ups on what these facilities will look like. We have begun the on-the-ground real estate work. Uh, to date, we have looked at 75 sites physically around the state. We have identified a number, another 450 sites around the state for uh, review. As we speak now, there's a whole team of people in Brooklyn looking at sites, going site to site. I think they have 20 sites on the lot docket for today. So, you know, a lot of work is being done already. We issued an RFI and received back 
10 responses for general partners. Uh, the RFP should go out sometime next week. Uh, we're also working on the RFP for design build part of this component. And also thinking about supply chain, we'll probably be doing ordering sometime in mid-May for some of the generic supply like security systems and cabinetry and other things we'll go in these facilities. All this is designed to make sure that by the time we have good cannabis grown by our great hemp farmers, combined with our uh, new licensees that we're working on now, regulatory-wise, have a place to sell this cannabis. And we're going to make these state-of-the-art great facilities. So extremely excited. I want to thank the governor for her support. I think leadership of the assembly and the Senate for their support. And, you know, a lot of late nights were spent <laughs> um, by a lot of people in this room and out of this room. I just want to thank Chris and Axel and your team. You guys did a great job. Uh, I just want to shout out my team, Nadine Fontaine, who's our general counsel, worked very hard on this, and the uh, governor's chamber team did a great job. So it was, uh, you know, tough negotiations, but this is really going to be a one-in-the-nation way to get social equity really, really actualized in the state of New York. I'm just so proud of it. Again, thanks, everyone, uh, for their support. So look forward to more updates, but we'll be ready to go. Thank you. And I want to say thank you for your leadership on this. Too. As is always acknowledged at the table, this is a group lift, but um, we do know that um, it does take some leadership and we are so happy that you're here leading us in this endeavor. Um, but together we're doing it and I am really excited. I think that everyone in the state is. So we're gonna switch gears, keep the excitement moving. And I'm gonna ask our executive director, Chris Alexander for his report. Absolutely. So, 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 so. <laughs> As you've seen, and thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, uh, Ruben. Um, as, as folks have seen, uh, last week we launched uh, the first public education campaign of the state, the Cannabis Conversations, on April 4th, actually, uh, in both English and Spanish. Uh, this wide-reaching campaign, which is already visible on television, billboards, social media, and transit, informs the public about the state's new cannabis law. We explain to New Yorkers what's legal and what's not under the law, where you can legally use cannabis and how one can safely use cannabis, including protecting youth. The campaign will last three months and the initial phase started last week, centers on a 30 second overarching message that highlights the fact that we legalize, but only for adults 21 and over, uh, how important it is to keep secondhand smoke away from other people if you're choosing to smoke cannabis, the importance of locking up cannabis and storing it out of reach of children and pets, and of course, not driving under the influence. If you feel different, you drive different. <laughs> we will now show this 30 second advertisement that is playing on TV and streaming services. New York State has legalized cannabis. And to help understand what that means, we are starting the cannabis conversation. Who can use, where to use, and how to safely use. You must be at least 21 to legally use, possess, or buy cannabis in New York. If you choose to smoke cannabis, do it away from other people. Cannabis should always be stored out of reach of children, and you should never drive under the influence. Join the cannabis conversation at cannabis.ny.gov. As we move ahead with this campaign, the next phase will reinforce these messages and broaden the campaign to include messages on our equity goals for the industry, educate folks about the medical cannabis program, and the risk of consuming while pregnant or breastfeeding. Every advertisement points New Yorkers back to our website, cannabis.ny.gov, which will continue to be updated with new fact sheets, FAQs, and more information under the Cannabis Conversations banner. I encourage everyone to visit and to learn more. Our, our new approach uh, demonstrates that educating the public on the facts around New York's cannabis law, including information to help protect youth and keep New Yorkers safe, is our top priority. This educational campaign is just the beginning, and we're excited uh, to continue to provide opportunities for New Yorkers to learn more about cannabis. Workforce development. Thank you to our partners at the Department of Labor. Uh, they've launched a new cannabis workforce site, a one-stop shop for resources and tools for individuals interested in working and building professional skills in the New York cannabis industry. The website will be updated as new opportunities become available, and you can see the website listed here on the slide. The office was also at the Department of Labor's 22nd Annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Career Fair on Thursday, April 7th at the Empire State Convention Center in Albany. Job seekers from all over the capital region were able to connect with the office 
and companies involved in the New York cannabis industry. The office encourages those interested in career opportunities with the Office of Cannabis Management to sign up for office updates on OCM's website and to monitor the office's career website. And you can see the specific web address also on the slide. My last update is a, a nuanced uh, tax issue, also an outcome from the enacted budget. It's very important to businesses in the cannabis industry and, and those interested in coming into the space. Due to the ongoing federal cannabis prohibition, cannabis businesses operating in legal states like ours cannot deduct normal business expenses when paying taxes. This disproportionately impacts the small and medium sized businesses that are at the core of our cannabis program here in New York. The enacted fiscal year 2023 budget provides some help by decoupling the New York State Tax Code from Federal Tax Code 280E, allowing cannabis businesses that will operate in this state to deduct normal business expenses when calculating their state tax liability. We're thankful to the governor and the legislature for once again delivering the tools to help small businesses prosper in New York and in the cannabis industry that we're building. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, so we've just covered a whole lot of ground today. We've uh, had a lot to celebrate here in this state. Thank you everyone for your contributions and getting us this far, but we still have a long way to go. I just want to note that information regarding our next board meeting, including the time, location, and a live stream link will be shared on cannabis.ny.gov in advance of the next Cannabis Control Board meeting. Additionally, a recording of today's meeting, our meeting minutes, and a transcription will be posted. That concludes today's agenda. May I please have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Make that motion. motion. Second. Second. Um, and I just want to say thank you. If there are any discussion questions or comments from the board members? Madam Chair, prior to closing, uh, we are hosting in my dad's the office uh, again today. I'm glad to have you here and use it all the time. But I just reflected back as I sat here. When we started this journey, a couple of folks uh, worked out of our office for you, you as well for a couple of months. And to see from that little incubator, you know, <laughs> embryonic <laughs> state to now, just, just fantastic. What a thank you. I think that we're delighted. We have a lot to look forward to. I hope that everyone stays connected with us. We've invited you several times to sign up on our website. So please continue to do that. Um, we will keep, make sure that we send the alerts because a lot's happening here. We have a great team and we want to make sure that you're a part of the movement. Thank you. So um, any other comments? Yeah, just one note on a different subject. Um, I just, it's, you know, as the executive director mentioned, the growing season is the growing season and getting going. So, um, you know, I just want to say that I am open if if we need to, to meet on a more accelerated schedule to help move um, the remaining applications through the process. So, appreciate that. Additional comments? Um, then I will call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 And this adjourns the meeting. It, the motion to adjourn the meeting carries. Thank you very much and thank you everyone for your service. Thank you.